Here we have a triangle ABC and it has an inscribed circle inside. The inscribed circle is tangent to all three sides of the triangle and the points of tangency are D, E and F. Angle A in triangle ABC is 60 degrees. We also know this side AE which is 4, EC is 2. And inside of this triangle, we have a line AM. And AM intersect the circle in two places, point P and point Q, such that AP equals to MQ. And we ask to find the side AM. Well, first of all, this is not a correct draw. This is a drawing I made when I first read the problem. Because normally, when you have a problem in geometry, you don't get a drawing. You just get a text. And based on this text, you need to create your own drawing. Normally, it is recommended to have the correct drawing or make a drawing as correct as possible. Sometimes, incorrect drawing will result in incorrect conclusions. So what would happen in this case? Well, we don't really know what the angles B and C are. We don't know if they are acute or obtuse. So does it really matter? Well, it depends. We don't know if it matters, so it doesn't. It may matter if you start using some facts, for example, the fact that angle C is acute, but it turned out that angle C is obtuse. Another thing, we put point M here. Is point M really between B and D or between C and D? Those things we need to keep in mind when we deal with the drawings where we're not sure that whether this drawing is correct or not. If you're not sure about the drawing, we actually should try to avoid using the facts that rely on certain aspects of the drawing, which we're not sure. Here we have an inscribed circle and I'm going to use certain facts about inscribed circles, which I talk in many, many details in one of the previous videos. And I posted the link to this video here. One fact is since E and F are point of tangency, AE should be equal to AF. In a similar way, EC should be equal to CD. And obviously, FB should be the same as BD, but we don't know either one of them, so let's call it X. So let's call point O as the center of a circle. Now we're going to connect this point O with point E and point A. Notice since E is a point of tangency, OE will be at 90 degrees to AC. Also, we know that point O center of the inscribed circle lays at the intersection of angle bisectors of a triangle. It means that AO splits the angle A in two halves and that means that angle OAE is 30 degrees. Now if you look at triangle AOE we find that one angle is 90 degrees, that angle is 30 degrees, so the third angle should be 60 degrees and we are dealing with 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And we know a lot of things about 30, 60, 90 degree triangles. I also posted the link to a video where I discussed this. One thing we know that OE, or radius, should be AE divided by square root of 3. In the previous video, when I was talking about inscribed circles, I derived the relationship between the area of a triangle and the radius of an inscribed circle. The relationship is that the area of the triangle is the radius of a circle times half of the perimeter of the triangle. And that gives us this formula. The other thing we can do is to calculate the area of the triangle in the normal way, as a half of the height times the base. So the height or altitude we're going to take is this BH. In this case, the base will be AC, and the area of a triangle will be 3 times BH. And all we need to find now is that BH. And we can do it quite easily. Look at the triangle ABH. 
because 90 degree angle, the angle A is 60 degrees and that makes this angle B 30 degrees. So we got ourselves again 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And now we know the hypotenuse of this triangle and based on this hypotenuse we try to calculate the leg that is opposite of 60 degree angle. And we know that leg will be squared of 3 over 2 times the hypotenuse. And now notice we calculated area one way and we calculated the area another way. So obviously those formulas should be the same. So we can equate both of this relationship. Now in the second equation we actually use the formula for BH to get here. What we have here is a linear equation for x, which we can easily solve, and we can find that x is 12. And now we know all the sides of this triangle. And once we know all the sides of the triangle, we can easily draw it in a more correct fashion. When you go to math competitions, you're normally allowed to carry a ruler and a compass with you. So we can accomplish drawing a triangle in a correct way by using a ruler and a compass. And if you do, we're going to get a triangle like this. You notice the angle C is actually indeed is obtuse angle. Whether it's important to us or not, well, we'll see. Also, notice the point M is between B and D, and that's really, well, just a guess based on eyeballing different distances, this seems to be the only possible scenario. But again, you cannot purely rely on the drawing, even if it's done with compass and ruler. If in any way we're going to use the fact that M is between B and D, that has to be shown to be true. Otherwise, we'll have to also consider the case when M between C and D and prove that it's not there. The other thing that should come to your mind when you deal with the circles and the lines and the segments is something called power of a point theorem. There are several variations of this theorem. The variation we need is this. So we have two lines. We have a blue line and we have a red line. The blue line crosses the circle at two points, A and B here. The red line is actually tangent to the circle, and point E is a point of tangents. And it turned out there's a relationship between the segment OE and segments OB and OA. And that's this relationship. I have a detailed video related to power of a point theorem, looking at all possible combinations. I posted the link and I highly recommend you to watch that. Now we're going to use this theory. Notice what we can do. We can look at the line AM as our blue line here. And also we can look at line AE or AC, which is a tangent line, and that's going to work like our red line here. And if we apply this power of point theorem, we get the relationship between AP, AQ, and AE. And we know what AE is. So we know what the product of AP times AQ is. We can also apply this theorem for another pair of lines. We're going to use again line AM, but the other line is going to be BC. Point M is point of intersection of those lines. And in this case, we're going to relate MQ, AMP, and MD. But now notice that MQ and AP are the same length. Also, notice that AQ consists of the brown piece and the green piece. MP also consists of brown piece and the green piece. So AQ and MP are also the same length. But that means that the left-hand side of both equations are the same, and therefore the right-hand side should be the same, and that gives us MD.
And now we are ready to calculate AM. To do that, we're going to apply a law of cosines. Just to remind you, if I have a triangle, and I know two sides of this triangle, like A and B, and I know a cosine of the angle between them, I can use this formula to calculate the third side. Now, to calculate AM, I know side AC and CM, but the next thing I need to know is the angle between them. I need to know cosine of angle C. To get that angle, we can look at the triangle ABC, and on that triangle, I know all the sides. So I can use law of cosines to actually find the cosine of the angle. So if you look here, I know AB, I know BC, I know AC, and I can calculate cosine of angle C. If you plug the numbers and rearrange, you will get that cosine of angle C is minus one seventh. Now notice cosine is negative, and that's an indication that angle C is more than 90 degrees. So now I know this cosine. Now I can look at triangle AMC and find AM. I know AC, I know MC, which are in fact the same length, and I know cosine. Plug them in, and we get AM as 24 over square root of 7. Now the question is, what about this point M? We got this answer, assuming that point M is between B and D. What if this point M is between C and D? Well, if you remember, we used the power of a point theorem. But for the power of point theorem, it doesn't really matter where M is. So if M here or here, MD should be 4. And we notice that since CD is only 2, there is no way for us to put M between C and D. M has to be between B and D.